Hello, hello, hello. I welcome you once again to Saturday Evening Live. I say hello to all the friendship, family members, and the friends from around the state, around the country, around the globe uh, who join us so faithfully on Saturdays. As you know that these Saturdays are designed uh, to be our get ready time. Uh, these Saturdays, it's time for us to get locked and loaded uh, to lift up the name of our Savior together on Sunday morning. I told you a long, long time ago that I always believe that the whole importance of Sunday morning, it gets accented by the fact of preparation on Saturday night and Saturday evening. So these times are being used to prepare us. I know you've got a lot going on. A lot of things to get done. And I know some of you are vegging out on Netflix. I want to encourage you to go to bed early tonight. So you can get up tomorrow and you can join us tomorrow morning at 9.30 a.m. You should be on a Zoom call with someone in your life group. You should be in your walk through the Bible. And at 11 a.m. tomorrow, we're certainly going to all be on our live streaming together uh, here at Friendship, which is a place to begin again. So I thank God for you so much because you've made so many sacrifices during this COVID crisis. And we've made so many transitions and you, 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 you've been a champion throughout all of them. Uh, you have not you have not displayed uh, any murmuring. You haven't displayed any any fatigue. Uh, as the old saying goes, you've been running for the Lord a long time. And many of you haven't got tired yet. And I thank God you haven't got tired yet. I want to just bring a reminder of a couple of things quickly, please. Our food pantry. Our food pantry here at Friendship. I told you two weeks ago we need to do an initiative to empty the food pipe, the, the food pantry. And you know we did just that. We emptied it. Uh, we gave, we fed over 200, 270 some people we took care of. Uh, and I told you we need to restock it. I need you to give so we can restock it. And guess what? You gave. And so we thank God you gave and just restocked. And now we're reloaded to go again. And we're going to empty it again. And so we've got a full food pantry up and going. And we've got a lot of a lot of meat produce uh, and things going on. And so I want you to be mindful to tell someone or call someone. Let them know that it's available here for them. And we'll be here Monday through Saturday all of next week. And just let us know. And we will take care of you. All you must have is the need. You don't have to be a member of this church. You don't have to be from this city. If you can get here. Uh, we're going to help you. We're going to put it in your car for you. We're going to show you how to get it to your car, and we're going to bless you. And we're going to empty it again because we're going to empty it again, and we're going to trust God to fill it again because the God whom we serve, he is big enough to feed us. That's why the Bible says, give us this day our daily bread. So God will give us the daily bread that we need. But also saying that, I want to throw something at you that I'm going to say tomorrow is that in, 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 in conjunction with our food pantry ministry, we're going to have a family fun challenge. I know you say, well, what is this? You know, knowing me being a runner and all like that, how much I run, it's, it's not a running challenge. It's not a lift weighting challenge. It's not a push-up challenge or anything like that. So breathe, breathe, breathe. No, this is a challenge for family fun in which uh, whoever can make, whatever families can make, mask. We want you to make masks. We're looking for the most creative mask of friendship has to be something related to friendship. Now, you can't just go buy a mask and stamp the friendship logo on it and turn it in. That doesn't apply. We want you and your family to make masks, as many as you can. And on the end of this month, at the end of this month, we're going we're gonna to say who the winners are. And the winners going to give you a big old shout out and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but, but we want to take these masks and we're going to give them away as part of our gift bag in the food pantry. So even you're making the mask will be part of our ministry. So we're going to make the most creative, the most fun, and it's really a fun project for the family. I know some of you are so, so competitive. You already got your wheels turning and you're going to try to win. There are no trophies. There are no gold medals. It's just that we're going to use this as something we as families can rally together around. And, and, and I tell you, I cannot, I cannot stitch a needle. I don't know anything about sewing. However, I'm going to learn. And me and my family, we're going to put together some masks, and we're going to turn in our masks, and, and, and we're going to put them in those bags, and we're going to give them away to people. So that's going to be the family fun challenge. I'll say much, much more about that on tomorrow in service. But we're giving away food. We're going to do the family fun challenge among ourselves here at Friendship. And you who are watching, you can also make one too, or make three or four and send them in. We'll take yours too, because you're part of this, this greater virtual community. Also, I want to remind you guys about our graduation next Saturday. We're going to do our very first ever parking lot graduation. 
Our graduates could not graduate the way they envisioned graduating, but you know us here at Friendship. We're going to always find another way to kind of skin that proverbial cat. We're going to come another way. And so we're not going to leave you out. We have some high school graduates. We have some undergrad graduates. We have some postgraduates. And next Saturday at this time at 6 p.m., we're going to be out on that parking lot. Uh, we're going to turn that parking lot into a, a big congregation of praise and celebration for our graduates. And we're going to ask you as, as a church to come out. Come out in your car. We're going to maintain all the social distancing protocol. But we ask you to come out. And you can be in your car. We're gonna have a, we're gonna have our PA system. We're gonna have our music pumping as we always do. And we're gonna and we're gonna honor these graduates. They don't know what's gonna be entailed. It's, it's a different graduation. I know we have gra graduation Sunday every year, but this one is going to be different. And I want you to be a part of it. And so and so, please tell everyone and please prepare to come. And you come and park your car and watch it from your car. And we're gonna celebrate our graduates because they've done a great job. And we're not gonna let anything interrupt our celebration and telling God thank you and telling them that we're so proud of them. So that's next Saturday at 6 p.m. Also, you're following us. Continue to follow us here at Friendship. Uh, go to our website. You can follow us on YouTube. You can follow us on Facebook on Sunday. And what you're doing on Wednesday nights for our Word Wednesday is phenomenal. From all over this country, you are, you are tuning in. You're shooting your comments, shooting your questions. You're encouraging each other. And I thank God for you oh so much. And on Sunday mornings, you are there on Sunday mornings. Uh, I thank God for you joining us. But go to our website, Friendship CB friendshipcbc.com friendshipcbc.com and just click in that link and join us on Wednesday join us on Sunday be a part of us we welcome you we welcome you to come and right now uh, as they say be a watch care member in other words whatever's going on right now in your situation we're not trying to steal any members I support every pastor I support every ministry leader I respect every team whatever they're doing I'm on their side we're not trying to go and pick other people's sheep we're not doing that at all no we just want to be a blessing to the body of Christ and those yet who, who are yet to be in the body of Christ. There are still people who are unsaved who need the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we're going to be on the front line preaching this gospel of Jesus Christ that whosoever will may come. But go to our site and do it. And don't forget to give, friendship. Don't forget to give. I want you to give. There's, there's three platforms for giving, three mechanisms for giving. You can give online. You can also text to give. You can also drive and drop. Tomorrow after service is over at noon, you can drive by. There's leaders sitting out there waiting to wave at you and waiting to receive your tithes and your offering. Continue to be faithful because God is still being faithful to us. We can't all make the same sacrifice, but we can all make a sacrifice. And so I want you to be faithful doing that. Now, i got one more thing I want to tell you. Yesterday, I was driving my daughter around. We're looking for a bicycle. Like, everyone has a bicycle now. So she decided she wanted a bicycle. So I'm going to take her to get a bicycle. And we, we're just going to make a short trip, five-minute trip. Uh, of course, we went to the store, and they had no bicycle. So we're going to go to another store to get a bicycle. And would you not know that a little downfall of rain turned into a huge monsoon? It was like a tsunami. Where did all this water come from? You know, guys, living here in the greater Houston area and in the suburbs of Houston, uh, that two things are going to happen. Either, number one, you're going to get burned up because of heat or you're going to drown because of the water. Well, it rained cats and dogs yesterday, and it flooded immediately. I mean, it just came out of nowhere, and the wind was gushing against my car and rocking my car, but thank God I had a strong car, and the wind didn't throw me off the road. It was just crazy, but it made me think about Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27, when Jesus talks about a storm. When Jesus talks about rain, and he talks about flooding, he talks about wind, and he did it at the conclusion of his Sermon on the Mount. In other words, Jesus is saying, this is the time for you to take action. He's saying, okay, I've done my part. I've preached this sermon. Now it's your turn to decide what you will do with the sermon. Will you be a hearer or a doer? And he tells this story, this great story, about these, these two builders. They were both builders. And he characterized one as a wise man and the other one as a foolish man. The wise man, because what? He built his house upon the rock. Jesus says he acted on what he heard. He built his life upon the rock of God's word. He applied it. He didn't just take it and go dictate it to somebody else. He didn't just go write a book about it. He didn't just go and blast it on Zoom or YouTube. No, he actually took it to heart, embraced it, and fleshed it out in his daily living. The other man, Jesus says, is a foolish man. 
Because he heard the very same thing, but he chose not to act on it. And Jesus says that that foolish man built his house on sand. Now, who in the world would ever build their house on sand? In this time we're living in, there's a whole lot of storms going on. Some of you are watching me right now. You're in the storm of your life as never before. And the winds are blowing and the floods are coming and the rains are coming. And it seems like it's just proverbially raining cats and dogs. But the question I have for you today and the question I had to ask myself, could you be characterized as a wise man or a wise woman or a foolish man or a foolish woman? That's the real. Jesus said there are two options and there's only two. And there is the wise and there's the foolish. There's the rock and there's the sand. But here's the interesting part about it. You never really know which is which until the storm comes. When the storm comes, it reveals the foundational choice. And so I want to ask you today, what's your foundation? Because you're being battered, you're being bruised, you are being hit. But what's your foundation? Have you chosen to leave God or are you drawing closer to God? James 4, 8, Jesus, the word of James says, draw, draw near to God and God will draw near to you. God will, he's there waiting to reciprocate your drawing to him. And so what are you doing? A wise man draws, draws to God and draws from God. But a foolish man, a foolish woman decides, no, nah, this ain't for me. I got it. I'll make it happen. And here's the thing about a foolish man or a foolish woman is that is that, that decision which they made in private, always goes public because Jesus says that it fell and great was his fall. In other words, it could be seen. It was evident that the foundation that was shaky, it was sandy. It was not built on the rock of God's word. And when the storm and the winds blew and came, they had nothing to do but lay down on the sand of alcohol, the sand of drugs, the, the, the very sound, the sand of woe is me. It was a sandy foundation. So today I want to encourage your heart today that perhaps you got something in your life now that you know and I know is sandy. It's not secure. It's not rock. Oh, the storms are coming. In this life, I have lived long enough. I have pastored long enough to discover that storms keep on coming. They will come for the rest of your life. But if you got the right foundation, if you are locked and loaded, not in your power, not your might, because that is inadequate for the storm, you must be have the root and the foundation of Jesus Christ. And he's able to hold you because you can't hold yourself, but he will hold you and you'll be classified as a wise man and a wise woman. Come, come what may, the Lord will hold you. He will keep you. Let me pray for you right now that you're in the midst of it. You're in the midst of it. Maybe you're on your way to it and you don't even know it. I want to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we're all in a storm, God. We're all in something right now, something emotionally, something psychologically, something spiritual, Lord God, something financial, Lord God, something relational, Father God. There's a health storm someone viewing right now. And it's my prayer, God, that they would choose right now, based on all that you have said and all you have been saying, to build their lives, Lord, on the foundation of actualizing, obeying, putting into practice your very word that you said is forever settled in heaven. I pray, God, that whatever is sand in our lives, Whatever we view as a cheap substitute, that God, that you would just cast it away. We would cast it aside and dig deep, Lord God. Because, Lord, when the rain comes and the storms come, Lord God, it's too late to build. And right now, God, it's too, not too late. Thank you for grace. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for the warning. And thank you, God, for giving us a person in Jesus Christ. That, God, that we can stand the storms of life and prevail. Thank you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God use you. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. We're going to lift up the name Jesus. Isn't he worthy? Isn't he worthy? Isn't he worthy? God bless you. God keep you.